Hello and welcome to Ageless Rock, a channel for megalithic fans with megalithic lens to see megalithic sites from a megalithic perspective. Today, we are going to check out a very ancient brick temple. This monument has five brick towers on a laterite platform. This temple is called Kravan Temple. In Khmer language, Kravan means cardamom. So, a direct translation will mean cardamom temple. So, what has Asian spice got to do with this temple? The reason locals call this cardamom temple is because cardamom plant was thriving inside the central tower. No one knows the original name of this temple. Kravan Temple is believed to have been built in the 10th century by two possible candidates. For now, credit goes to either King Harshavarman I or King Ishanavarman II. This Hindu temple is clearly a temple with a moat. By estimating from Google Earth, it looks like the length is about 145 meters long and 130 meters wide. It is safe to assume that the moat is about 20 meters wide. This is just to show you that the moat area is about the same as the temple area. Maybe this info will be useful in the future. Just like many other temples with berets, Kravan Temple also comes with a beret. There is no mention on Google Map that this is Kravan Beret. It is about 200 meters long by 120 meters wide. At 24,000 square meters, this is a very impressive achievement just to contain water. Just imagine, trees were chopped down and cleared away before digging a few meters deep. A total of 42,850 square meters of land was taken up to fulfill the need of a temple in a moat and a body of water. Archaeologists link water tank is for agriculture and moat is for religion. If moat temples are for worshippers and berets are for farmers, then Hinduism and Buddhism are the greatest religions for agriculture. Within these 4 square kilometers of land area, you can visit 3 sets of moated temples with berets. I can assure you, no Buddhists and Hindus think about farming when digging moats and berets. It is most likely a lost knowledge about beneficial energy like yin and yang. From the satellite view, it looks like there is some archaeological work to be done here. The center of the beret is probably a structure of a temple. It is definitely something worth looking into. Maybe the locals will tell you about energies beneficial to living things around this structure. When the French rediscovered this site, it was in complete ruin and covered in vegetation. It would have been a great location for a Hollywood movie about a lost kingdom. The locals who lived here were primitive compared to the French, but already knew nothing about what happened here. There were definitely no cardamom growing inside the main tower. As you can see from early photos, it is extremely challenging for locals to restore these monuments in the early 20th century. No one can think of a reason how it was even abandoned to the point of lost civilization if the locals have been here since a few millennia ago. In the early 1930s, two architects from France by the names of Georges Trouvet and Henri Marshall cleared the vegetation and paved the way for future restoration to come. They studied Angkorian architecture along with French archaeologists and told the local Cambodians what happened here. This mysterious temple wasn't restored until 1962. A French-Cambodian archaeologist by the name of Bernard Grosslier initiated the restoration that went on until 1966. He was born in Cambodia and died in France and left a Western archaeological legacy of documenting Angkorian history. 
If you travel back in time to the 60s, you will see the structure closer to nature. You will have very little clue what it looks like in the original form. Even this view is far too revealing from what the locals have been seeing over the centuries, which is more trees than bricks. Today, you will have no clue how nature reclaimed this temple for so many centuries. We can only wonder why would ancient Angkorians build this 1000 years ago and mysteriously abandon it when all they need to do is maintain it. Even with several wars within a thousand years, Cambodians can always come back, clean up and use it again. According to inscriptions at Tower 2, 3 and 5, this temple was consecrated in 921 AD by Mahi Daravarman, who was a high official at the court of King Harshavarman I. This brick temple was dedicated to Lord Vishnu. I can only imagine the beauty of this temple. So, I cut and paste a few sections and imagine the view of this temple as if I were to travel back in time to the year 921 AD. This five tower facing east would be a temple very advanced for its time. If you can imagine that the people were all living in flimsy huts with thatched roof, walking around barefooted. From the temple layout, I can see that it has the geometry of a mandala. Mandala is a spiritual tool to enhance meditation to heighten the practitioner's ability to focus. This looks like an intelligent design given to us by the unknown ancient builders. There is a lot of work to stack the bricks all the way to the top, but looks like it has a truncated top with an opening. So that means it was not meant to be a roof to prevent rainwater from entering. At the bottom, it has a Yoni Linga. It is a typical sacred object of Hindu temple. But just imagine when it rains, water will actually drip onto the Yoni Linga. I think this could be the sacred act of Abhishekam where water, milk or other liquids were poured on the Linga. But bear in mind that Abhishekam is a ritual practiced among Hindus worshipping Lord Shiva. Kravan Temple is said to be dedicated to Lord Vishnu. This connection is just my thought for future reference. This temple comes with a famous relief that depicts Lord Vishnu with a Chakra, Padma, Panchajanya and Kaumodaki. He is seen here riding on Garuda. A mythical bird. But I am impressed and doubtful at the same time that the bricks are actually tight fitting blocks with no gaps. They are not mass produced because they are not the same size. If you look at the details, they are actually like polygonal stones that fit perfectly but with no gap. By contrast, our modern mass-produced bricks with mortar are clearly of inferior quality compared to the ancient bricks made 1000 years ago. Logically, we should be making bricks that can last another 1000 years. If you look at the corners, you can even say these are polygonal blocks. This is another bas-relief that depicts Vishnu with his four appurtenances. But the mysterious rectangular holes that appear in all megalithic sites are here as well. There is no reason for these holes to be here. They damage the beautiful relief on the wall for no reason. If you wear your megalithic lens, you can see the mysterious side of this temple very easily. The rectangular holes are everywhere. The unknown ancient builders were capable of large sandstone blocks for all five entrances but decided to go with bricks that fit perfectly without a gap. In the center wall, you can see Lord Vishnu with eight arms. 
He is surrounded by many devotees. There is a reptilian looking creature on top of Vishnu that looks like a crocodile. No one knows what is the story for this relief yet. In the northernmost tower, which is the first tower on the right as you enter from the east, you can see Goddess Lakshmi with four arms holding appurtenances of Vishnu and two arms holding Trishula of Shiva and Chakra of Vishnu. The four arms Lakshmi has two devotees and two arms Lakshmi has four devotees while the Yoni has a missing Linga. Most people will think that bricks are doable projects and so there is nothing mysterious about this temple. But I would like to know why the technology and effort were not extended to building houses. I am very sure the king and the rich people would like to have brick houses as big as they can afford, where the house has kitchens, toilets and bedrooms. This temple may be small compared to the big ones like Angkor Wat, but if you look at the big picture, it is still very much a mystery. Maybe when you visit this site, don't forget to put on your megalithic lens and see the animatic aspect of its origin. The front of the temple has a cruciform structure as you enter from the east. This is a very important functional structure if we know the sacred geometry and knowledge we lost. Well, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this short presentation on Kravan Temple and Parade. See you in the next video and have a wonderful day. This is Bernie Ong signing out. Lehain.